subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Hello friends, this is Santanam from Officers IAS Academy. And in this video, we will continue what we were doing so far, which is analyzing the previous year's UPSC prelims questions. And I have been analyzing the history questions specifically. So we have looked at ancient, medieval, art and culture questions and we have now entered into the modern Indian history questions. So we have already seen two sets of questions in the previous two videos of modern Indian history asked in 2015, 16 and 17. So in this video, we will learn, we will solve the UPSC prelims questions in modern India asked in the year 2018. So we will jump into solving those questions right away. Starting with the first question. In 1920, which of the following associations changed its name to Swarajya Sabha? That's the question. So which of the following organizations? It's a very straightforward question. It's a factual question also. And this question you should know, it is not Hindu Mahasabha. It is not South Indian Liberal Federation. No, it is not Servants of India Society also. This All India Home Rule League, that All India Home Rule League, which was instituted, started by Bal Gangadhar Tilak and Annie Besant, they both were the ones who started this Home Rule League, which was a movement against the British, which was to talk about the importance of self-government in India and India getting ruled by Indians themselves. This Home Rule League was later changed to the name Swarajya Sabha because they were asking for Swarajya, home rule, self-rule. So that is the answer to this question. So the answer for the first question is option A. That is the answer. Second question. He wrote biographies of Mazzini, Garibaldi, Shivaji and Sri Krishna. So he has written biographies of these people. He stayed in America for some period of time also elected to be a member of the Central Assembly. Who is this person? So we have been given multiple sets of information. We are supposed to find out who it is. The answer is quite straightforward, of course. It is Lala Lajpatrai because he is the one who wrote the biographies of these two people and also Shivaji and Sri Krishna. And not just that, Lala Lajpatrai stayed in America soon after the Swadeshian boycott movement. So after the Swadeshian boycott movement, the British were hunting down all the extremist leaders like Tilak, Lala Rajpatrai, Bipin Chandrapal, Arvind Ghosh and everybody. And in that juncture, he went out of India and stayed in America. So that's Lala Rajpatrai. And not only that, after he came back to India, after he took part in non-cooperation movement in India under Gandhi, you remember Congress split into two groups, pro-changers and no-changers. So, Lala Lajpatrai was a pro-changer who wanted to go and contest in the elections and therefore along with other members of Congress, he got into Swaraj party and he contested in elections. He won a seat for a membership in Central Legislative Assembly in India. So therefore, all these details point to this one person, Lala Lajpatrai. That's the correct answer. Question number three. Who among the following were the founders of Hind Mazdur Sabha? So Hind Mazdu Sabha, what it is? It was actually established in 1948 after independence. And this Hind Mazdu Sabha was a trade union, all India trade union, some kind of a trade union. And this was organized, this was founded by Ashok Mehta, T.S. Ramanujam and G.G. Mehta. So once again, it's a factual question where you need to know who were, who were involved in which kind of organizations. So Hind Mazdu Sabha is a trade union which in fact comprised a culmination of different trade unions in India. There were more than 3 million members in this trade union. And this was started by these three people. And T.S. Ramanujam was the first leader of this Hind Mastur Sabha. So the answer is option D for the third question. Question number four. Which one of the following is a very significant aspect of the Champaran Satyagraha happening in 1917 in Champaran in Bihar? Active all India participation of lawyers, students, women and national movement. No. 
there was no all Indian participation, it was the participation of people of Champaran, that is all. Active involvement of Dalit and tribal communities in India in the national movement, no, that was not visible. There was no specific focus on Dalit and tribal communities and there was no active involvement of tribal communities of India in the national movement because this was not even a national movement. Drastic decrease in the cultivation of plantation crops and commercial crops, no, that is also wrong. There was no drastic decrease in the cultivation of plantation crops. What plantation crop was grown? Indigo was grown and there was no drastic decrease, there was a steady decrease which eventually led to the stoppage of indigo plantation in India and therefore the statement number, uh, statement D is also wrong, option D is also wrong. That leaves us with option C which says joining of peasant unrest to India's national momentum, that is correct because this is Gandhi's first Satyagraha in India and here he did not involve any national leaders, he did not involve any political play, he took to the masses and tried to find out what problems they faced and therefore for the first time peasant protest became a part of national protest and that is the right answer. Option C is the right answer for this question. Question number 5. Consider the following pairs, whether they are marked correctly. Radha Kanta Deb, the first president of British Indian Association, they say. Radha Kanta Deb. Was he the first president of British Indian Association? Yes. What are these associations? More parties, more associations for the sake of taking forward Indian political interests, that's all. Then Surendranath Banerjee, founder of Indian Association, that's also correct. Surendranath Banerjee was one of the founders, one of the founders. Then Gazulu Lakshmi Narasu Chetty, founder of Madras Mahajan Sabha, that is wrong because he was the founder of some other organization and not Madras Mahajan Sabha. The founder of Madras Mahajan Sabha, the founders were other people. He was the founder of Madras Native Association, not Madras Mahajan Sabha. Madras Mahajan Sabha was founded by people like uh, Subramani Iyer, uh, Veera Raghavachari, they were the founders of Madras Mahajan Sabha. So as you can see, UPSC seems to have been uh, focusing on questions where you need to remember organizations and those who are involved in those organizations, those who are probably founders of those organizations. This trend is noticed year after year, so please remember and take these suggestions seriously. So 2 is wrong, 1 and 3 are correct, the answer is option B, 1 and 3 only. Question number 6, regarding Woods dispatch, which of the following statements are true? Grant in aid system was introduced, meaning the government will give grants, aids for the development of educational institution in India, that is correct, that statement is correct. Establishment of universities was recommended. That is also correct. It recommended the establishment of many universities in India. English as a medium of instruction at all levels of education was recommended. No, this is wrong. The reason is because if you look at the education system in India, there is primary education and then there is higher level of education in schools and then there is college education. So three levels are there. The primary education is the most elementary form of education and Woods Dispatch says in the primary education only local languages meaning vernacular languages should be taught, vernacular medium of instruction should be used. In the higher level of insta education they told that there should be an Anglo vernacular combination of medium of instruction. You can use English as well as vernacular languages, you should use both says the Woods Dispatch with regards to higher levels of education and in college education only English, only English should be used says Woods Dispatch. The Woods Dispatch was put forward in 1856 under Lord Dalhousie sent from England and clearly it is asking for different mediums of instruction to be given to students at different levels of education and therefore English as a medium of instruction for all levels of education is wrong. So the statement number 3 is wrong, 1 and 2 are correct, the answer is option A, 1 and 2 only. Question number 7, 
with reference to educational institutes during colonial rule in India, consider the following pairs. So you have Sanskrit College at Banaras, Calcutta Madrasa and then Fort William College. So different institutions were created and the founders are also mentioned, we have to check whether it is correctly matched. Sanskrit College of Banaras, it says William Jones, is it correct? It is wrong. It was by Jonathan Duncan. Jonathan Duncan is the one who started the Sanskrit College at Banaras. Number 2, Calcutta Madrasa, Warren Hastings it says, that is correct. Warren Hastings was the person who started the Calcutta Madrasa very very early in history in uh, India. And then you have Fort William College by Arthur Wellesley. Is it correct? It is not correct because it is by Wellesley but not Arthur Wellesley but Richard Wellesley. Richard Wellesley is also called as Lord Wellesley who was the Governor General of Bengal at this point in time and he started this Fort William College. This Fort William College was started to train the newly recruited Indian civil service, Indian civil service, imperial civil service candidates and therefore this was created by Richard Wellesley, the governor general, not Arthur Wellesley. Arthur Wellesley is the brother of Richard Wellesley. So he was not involved here. So 3 is wrong, 1 is wrong, 2 is correct. The answer is option B, 2 only. Next question. Which among the following events happened the earliest, they are asking, the earliest set of event? Swami Dayananda established Arya Samaj. That happened in 1875 approximately. Deen Bandhimitra wrote Neel Darpan. Neel Darpan was written in during Indigo Revolt which happened in 1859. So obviously A cannot be the answer because that is already late than 1859. Bankin Chandra Chaddobadhyay wrote Anandmat. Now, Anand Math is a story of Sanyasi revolt which happened somewhere in the late 18th century, somewhere in the 1700s, late 1700s. That's the story of Anand Math. But understand, Anand Math is a story of what happened in 1700s. But Banki Chandra Chandobadhyay wrote about that story one century later only. So, it was written later. The events happened earlier. So, this happened somewhere in 1880s. That's when Bankin Chandra Chandrabadhyay wrote this. Satyendranath Tagore became the first Indian to succeed in Indian Civil Services exam. When did he succeed? It was in 1863. So therefore, you don't have to remember the years, but you need to know what sequence of events happened. And in these sequence of events, you notice that Deen Bandh Mitra's Neel Darpan is the earliest event that happened. And therefore, the answer is option B. A. C and D are wrong. Question number 9. Which of the following led to the introduction of English education in India? 1. Chart Tract of 1813. Did that introduce in English education? The answer is yes, it did. 2. General Committee of Public Instruction 1823. Yes, that is also correct. 3. Orientalist and Anglicist controversy. Yes, that is also correct. All these three had ensured that English as a medium of education and modern education, the western education is introduced in India. All three are the answer. The answer is option D, 1, 2 and 3. Question number 10. Economically, one of the results of the British rule in India in the 19th century, meaning 1800s, was the, which of the following? Increase in the export of Indian handicrafts. No, no. Indian handicrafts were declining under the British. So that's not the right answer. Growth in the number of Indian owned factories. No, that's wrong. The British wanted to own factories and the Indians were reduced to simply people who were involved in primary modes of economy, primary education, pri primary uh, sector economy. So factories were declining in India. So that's also not correct. Rapid increase in urban population, no wrong because de-urbanization was happening, urban population was declining, in fact it is the opposite. So that leaves us with option number C, option C, commercialization of Indian agriculture, that is the answer. Commercialization happened and cultivation of lots of cash crops started in India. So that is the consequence of the British rule, one of the important economic consequence of British rule in India. 
So the answer is option C. Question number 11. Which one of the following statements does not apply to the system of subsidiary alliance introduced by Lord Wellesley? So Lord Wellesley introduced subsidiary alliance and what is not a part of the subsidiary alliance we will try to understand. To maintain a large standing army at another's exp expense. That is actually correct because the British were maintaining the army on behalf of the Indian kings at the expense of the Indian kings. So this is a part of subsidiary alliance. So it is not the answer because they are asking which does not apply. B. To keep India safe from Napoleonic danger. Yes, subsidiary alliance has this uh, policy where they told that Napoleon Bonaparte is about to invade India and therefore India needs to be protected and for that protection British will give certain amount of uh, troops and training to the Indian soldiers. So that was also a provision of subsidiary alliance. So this is also not an answer. To establish British paramountcy over the Indian states. No, the subsidiary alliance says you are a subsidiary and you are an alliance, you are an ally. It does not talk about the British being the only people who are dictating the terms of administration to the subsidiaries. They say you take care of your internal administration by yourself. Only when it comes to foreign administration, foreign policies, you cannot have foreign policy by yourself, you need to consult with us. So there is no paramounts involved. So what results is here is to secure a fixed income of the for the company. That is the right answer because that was not a part of subsidiary alliance. Subsidiary alliance involved the British in getting money from the Indians for the sake of maintaining troops and to make them a subsidiary. But the income and the revenue was not the sole purpose of subsidiary alliance. That was not the purpose. So the answer to this question is option C. Question number 12. The staple commodities of export by the East India Company from Bengal in the middle of the 18th century, meaning 1750s onwards, where which of the following they are asking. So items of trade happening from Bengal, what were the items of trade primarily? Raw cotton, oil seeds and opium, no opium was done but not raw cotton, oil seeds that was not the primary. Sugar, salt, zinc and lead, no it is leaving out opium. Copper, silver, gold, spices, tea. No. Once again, no. Cotton, silk, salt, better than opium is the right answer. Salt, better was used to make explosives. Opium was also used to be traded from India to Britain and other parts of Europe. So the answer to this question is option D. Cotton, silk, salt, better than opium. That is the answer. Question number 13. After the Santal uprising subsided, what was or where the measure or the measures taken by the colonial government. So Santal rebellion happened, a tribal rebellion that happened. Santals fought against the British because they felt that the British and the Zamindari system and the land revenue system imposed by the British is not acceptable. The loss of their land, the ways of their life is getting disturbed. So they fought against the British but eventually the British suppressed it and as they suppressed it, what did they do? Territories called Santal Parganas were created. Did the British do that? Yes, the British did it. Such territories were created so that the Santals, they have their own territory demarcated so that their rights and privileges are protected in their territory. So that was done by the British because they know that they have to appease the Santals in some way so that the Santals are not rebelling against them once again. And also, it became illegal for a Santal to transfer land to a non-Santal. Did the British create such a law? Yes, that is also correct. Because the land that is held by the Santals should not be transferred to anybody else who is outside of the community. That was one of the Santals concerns. And the British decided to protect that privilege for the Santals once again to appease them and to ensure that such protest does not happen, such revolts does not happen. So both the statements are correct. The answer to this question is option C, both 1 and 2. So with this, we come to the end of the discussion of the modern Indian history questions asked in the year 2018. And to know detailed explanations of all these questions that are asked, please look in the description below so that you have the link for downloading the answer key with detailed explanations. To listen to such videos, to watch such videos and gain more information, 
with regards to UPSC, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.